this is one of the most iconic car badges in history. But I need to make it a little bit more personalized. So I'm going to offend most Porsche owners out there. Shortly after getting the Cadillac, I stripped the badges off of this and designed my own kind of axe-shaped badges, had them chromed, and installed them where the Cadillac badge used to be. Now I need to figure out how to take this off. I believe there's two nuts on the bottom side, so I'll pop the front bonnet, trunk, hood, front trunk, whatever, and see if I can get this off easy enough. There's two little... Those kind of stamped nuts that never have much luck with those things. Hopefully I can get them out without screwing something else up worse. Now, this little guy will pop right out, and there we go. I don't exactly know what that is. Is that paint? It appears that I'm going to need something that actually fills that spot, though. That's unfortunate. What I was hoping to do is just put a little axe right in the middle using those two holes, but with that looking like shit, I need something that fills that whole area. What I did here is I just cut the loose, it's basically black paint that wasn't stuck down underneath. And it's, there's gaps, you know, in there. So I did is just razor it out to make sure that the loose stuff was gone, but kept the, you know, the solid stuff down because I want black paint around that edge. The way I see it, I've got a couple options. For one, I could, make an ax so big that it stretched across and covered up that whole Porsche crest. It gets to be a little big and bulky. It's actually not gonna be probably any bigger than what the Cadillac one is. The other option is to make something that fits inside of this, but then maybe has just a chrome ax insert in it with a, a back plate that's solid. So I've got a little bit of thinking to do. Trying to design this front badge for the 911. So I started with a block and then I made it look like the existing emblem. And then I put the two bosses on it, and then I gave it the axe profile shape. Now in this particular design, I'm trying to see what happens if I make the whole thing bigger to cover the entire um, kind of recessed area. So now I made a quick drawing, and I'm gonna razor that out, lay it on the car, and see what it looks like. Took the paper cut out and used the pins to run through it so I can see how it'll lay on there. So if I put those two pins back in, there that's basically what it would look like so it's it's a little bit bigger but it's not it's not terribly bigger so this is one option the other option is to keep the axe within the existing porsche logo and have a uh, back piece to it this is the 3d printed prototype of the large axe badge you can see that it follows the pattern of the original badge so that rubber gasket would then go right in here, and then I'd need some kind of rubber gasket off to make for the outer edge. What I want to do is make sure that when I put it in place, all of this is in close contact with the rest of the body. Well, the raw badges showed up today. This is what it looks like in the tumbled aluminum form. And if you put it in the insert, or it'll kind of sit down in there. That's sort of what it looks like. It's <laughs> it's not any bigger than the Cadillac one. It just is different on a 911 than on a Cadillac, I guess. But this is about as small as I could be to fit and cover that uh, cavity from the old one. Now to get this chromed and then do the chrome for the rear end as well. But it looks like it sits nice and flat, which is good. That's what I wanted. I do need to get some rubber gasket material to go underneath this yet too. The original badge has a piece of TPES ABF rubber on the back as kind of a just a gasket to kind of seal and cushion it so you don't have metal on metal. So I ordered several different thicknesses of neoprene black rubber to try and make sure I've got as thin as I can but still make sure it's an even tension if you will between the blades of the axe and the base of it. If we take a section of the thinnest material, we put it in the middle, and then that's gonna fit here where that badge is. And we just put it on top. And now what we wanna do is look at the edge. And you can see it's, there's not much of a gap. It's a little bit of one, but not much. But it's probably not a big enough gap to slip that same gasket into. If we take the thicker one and put it in the middle, 
and put our badge on it. You can see it wanting to kind of almost come off of there. If we put that on, hold it, that gasket slides pretty easily in and out. So I'm probably going to want to just use this thin stuff on both surfaces. That should get a nice even tension. I just want to make sure it doesn't damage any of the paint. So I don't know, I'll look at it again once the final chrome piece comes. Now remember how that black paint was kind of flaking up in there? I want to make sure that's covered black so it doesn't look like this. So what I'm going to do is mask all around it and just hit this with some real solid durable black paint. And it'll be hidden so nobody will see the, the edge, but uh, I just want it to look a little bit better than this. So I'll have to scuff it up and clean it out. I've taped the front of the car so I don't get any overspray. And then what I've done is got it right up to almost the edge of where the black paint stopped and the silver is showing. I'm going to take some gray Scotch-Brite pad with a little bit of acetone and just scuff that silver up so I try to get good adhesion. After scuffing it, take the rag and wipe all the acetone off real well before it dries so you're getting all the dirt and crap out of it too. This is some badass shit here. It's epoxy paint. You know, black, of course, it's fairly high temp rated, 250, which you'll never see up there. Self-priming, all weather, dust salt resistance, and all that. So it's nasty stuff, which is why I'm being very careful about taping it. So now that that area is dry, I'm just going to real lightly put a little bit of this on it and uh, protect that. That's all there is to it, and I'll just let it dry. Now I've given it about 10 or 15 minutes, and I don't need a whole lot. I mean, it's in a hidden place, so I don't need to worry about it wear and tear, but I do want to make sure it's got one more light coat on it. And that'll be good. Now I'll just let it dry. Now at a quick glance, it's all black, it matches, there's none of that ugly, uh, you know, raw aluminum showing through it. So that's good and ready to mount. Just waiting for the badges to come back from the chromer now. Here's these beautiful, elegant letters Porsche puts on the car that I'm about to tear off. Just have some dental floss. Um, it might help to heat up the letters with the heat gun, just real carefully. But I'm going to try it with just dental floss and see how that works. The E is off. After almost two things of dental floss, the letters are all off. And now I've got just the residue left behind, so I'll get some acetone and get that off. Just taking a t-shirt with some acetone and just keep rubbing until it comes off. There's enough acetone on there, it's really not that bad. Don't use any kind of scrapers or even your fingernails I get a little bit nervous about. So just keep rubbing with acetone until all the adhesive comes off. The letters and residue are all off. You can still see a shadow, and that's basically because I haven't been able to polish right around the letters. So it's shiny where the letter protected it and around it, but not right where I couldn't. So I'll have to polish all this area to make it look even again. The original badge and the new axle one showed it from the chromer. Looking shiny, and now I need to put the mounting bolts in there. We have threaded holes on the outside to mimic these. Instead of those little stamped nuts, I've never been a big fan of those. Just going to screw some set screws into the back of it and use lock washers and nuts to hold it in place. Next thing is figuring out the right gasket material. So I've got several samples, I'm going to work through those. A little bit of red Loctite to keep them still. Didn't put them in too hard, basically just hand tight. Don't want them to, you know, poke through or dent the outer surface. Made a print of the drawing. Taped it to the gasket material. Zactoed out the shape for that insert. Got that fitting perfectly now. Just got to cut this edge out now. This gasket material is only one-sided adhesive, so you just pull the liner off and stick the back side of it to the back of the badge because you're not trying to hold it on with adhesive like some of the badges. This one actually has mechanical fasteners. 
Now I just need to put the one in the middle. And there's both surfaces. So I've got a piece of the 132nd gasket on both the center original Porsche crest and on the outside. It's got its two screws in there. Now all I gotta do is drop it through and put on the washers and nuts. With the badge in place, I cleaned the surface around where the badge will be on so there's no dirt pieces or anything underneath there so it'll sit flush. And remember, this has been film coated with whatever that stuff is, Expel or whatever, and so it's not right on raw paint. It's on that Expel coating, so it's just going in there. Now I put it in place. If I look underneath, a little hard to see, but the bolts are sticking out through the bottom. This is probably one of the trickiest parts. I have to take the socket that I'm going to use because it's up in there buried in those holes. So I've got to nut in first and then I have to take a lock washer and try to get it sitting somewhat flush, which it doesn't like, and then a flat washer on the very top. And I got to hold all that still and go up there perfectly straight onto the end of that bolt. And if you miss it, then that washer jumps off. Since these are such small fasteners, I ended up not only using the lock washers, but double nutted both of them as well. But the end product looks good. Feels good and stable. I don't feel any wiggle on it, so that's important. But there's the new badge, replacing the old one. On the back of these badges, we left a stud here so that it would make it easier for the chroming process, but obviously that can't be on there to go on the back of the car. So next step is to grind that off and then we'll cover this with that one side or with two sided tape. I want to make sure that those areas around the letters where it was a little bit scuffed and showed a shadow of the letters is gone. So I've been taking just, you know, some rags and a little bit of uh, rubbing compound to get those out. And I can get the rest of the area, but I want to make sure where I'm putting the new badge is all clean before I stick it down. Now I'm going to use the rag and a little bit of acetone to just clean the air real good before I stick anything to it. Now I have the two corners marked where the edges will go and all I have to do is put it on straight and we'll be good. Badge is in place and now I can tear the tape off. Get all that out of there and there it is. Now of course I want to go polish everything. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about how to enjoy amazing machines like this.